Mr. President, Senators, Congressmen, Your Majesty King Abdullah, honored guests, I'm so grateful to be back here at my favorite event of the year, the National Prayer Breakfast. It's wonderful, and last year, we were so blessed to give the keynote ourselves, myself and my beautiful angel wife, Roma Downey. <laughs> Most of you in this room know us from the Bible series, of course, um, but it started a lot longer than that. In the late 80s, I was sitting on Venice Beach selling T-shirts, wondering how to get going in America and could I start a real business. I came across a book, The Art of the Deal. <laughs> that book really, really inspired me, really got me going and thinking, you know what? America is the kind of place you can get a start and start a business. And I just wondered, I wonder if I'm ever, ever going to be in the presence or even set eyes on the guy that wrote this book. <laughs> that worked out. <laughs> it got me going in business. I started a little show called Survivor. It took the country by storm. And after a few years, I was producing the finale of Survivor. And I decided I'd take it into the real jungle, New York City. I needed a great backdrop, the Manhattan skyline, a lot of it built by the man who wrote The Art of the Deal, Donald Trump. I found a skating rink, the Trump Warman skating rink, right in Central Park with the backdrop of that Manhattan skyline. My guys made a deal with Mr. Trump and we got to build 5,000 seats of bleachers right there in the Central Park to do the finale of Survivor. I'd still never met Mr. Trump, but as I got on stage that day with five minutes to go live on CBS to get the crowd going and to have good energy with live TV, I spied sitting right in the front row, Mr. Donald Trump. My dream had come true, really. That book, The Art of the Deal, had got me going and now I'm in the, in the presence of the man himself, Donald Trump. The show went off great, and afterwards, he waited behind and came and found me, shook my hand, gave me his private office number and said, you know what, I like you. Call me, let's do something one day. Cut to six months later, I'm in the Amazon jungle making Survivor number six. Everything surrounding you there can kill you. The alligators, <laughs> the anacondas, the ants, even the plants. And I've been away from home about six months, and it really settled in when I made a satellite phone call home to my son. He said, Daddy, you've been gone a long time. I forgot what you looked like. I realized I had to try and get a job back in an American city. I've got to come up with something. What can I do after Survivor? I thought, I know. A show that can inspire about business. It's a job interview, but not with made-up resumes, with real tasks. But I need someone really dynamic to be the headliner and run this show. Someone who's inspiring, someone who's not afraid. I need a real winner. <laughs> you know, he'd give me his number. So I decided, I wasn't completely sure how I was going to make the show, and I, I thought, I'm going to go to New York, I'll be there for about 10 days, I'll get my head straight, and I'm going to get an appointment to go and see him. So coming in the car from JFK, I called that number, expecting to set an appointment. I got through to Norma Fodera, your assistant at the time, and she put me straight through. And all I wanted was an appointment. And now I'm speaking to Donald Trump. I really thought for a moment of hanging the phone up. <laughs> but I, I knew he knew it was me, and it'd be really weak. So I said, uh, I'm just calling for an appointment to see you. He said, what about? I said, well, you remember you mentioned about doing a show? I, I've got a great idea. Where are you? 
on the way from JFK. He said, great, you'll be here in half an hour. You know where Trump Tower is. I'll be waiting. See you then. Click. <laughs> I really thought of calling back to say, no, 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 I'm not ready. But I thought, you know what? This is just, I've got to go for it. I went straight up and I'm sitting in Mr. Trump's office in Trump Tower. He said, a lot of people have pitched me reality show ideas. They're silly. They want to see me combing my hair, living in my apartment. There's nothing smart about that. But this idea, The Apprentice, this could be really good to inspire lots of young Americans to get into business, to see how business really works. You know what? I love this. I want to do this. Go next door to Norma. Get on the phone with my agent. I said, agent? Aren't you a real estate mogul? He said, I know, I know, I've got an agent. Get on the phone with the agent and just work out the deal. I was so excited. I went next door, Norma was excited too. Called the agent, really full of energy. And he said, you're kidding, right? You went and saw my client, Mr. Trump, without my permission? I said, yeah, well, I, was, you know, I wasn't going to come in. I was going to set an appointment. He said, save it. He said, you can't do that. You've got to tell me the idea right now to approve it. I said, he just said yes. He said, I don't care. I went through the whole idea again on the telephone, which is one thing that Mr. Trump had always said in the art of the deal, try and always do things face to face. But now on the telephone, I told the guy, I thought I did a great job. I was waiting for him and he said, I hate it. It's never going to work. This apprentice thing will not work and I'm going to tell Mr. Trump he will not do The Apprentice. I was so dejected. I had to walk back in and he said, come in. He had it go. Well, Mr. Trump, I got bad news. He said, what do you mean? The agent said he hated the idea. It was, it was a terrible idea. He's not going to allow you to make it. Mr. Trump stood up from behind his desk. <laughs> he walked around and said, correct me if I'm wrong. Didn't I just give you my word? Didn't I say we were making this? We are going to make it. We're going to make a deal right now, just you and me. He said, and by the way, Norma, get in touch with the agent and tell him you're fired. <laughs> You know, that began 14 years of a relationship building a highly successful global television franchise. A relationship where we have never had a single bad word between us. Everything that comes up in business, we just deal face to face. No lawyers, no accountants. Deal with it straightforwardly. It's been one of the greatest relationships of my life.